Hello, this is the introductory video for discrete mathematics and functional programming. I am Thomas Van Drunen, and these videos are supplemental material for the textbook, DMFP as I call it, and I am making them available for two uses. First, I hope that instructors in, uh, in courses following the book will find uh, that having students watch these tutorial videos outside of class will allow them to use class time more effectively. Uh, the, this way, new concepts and definitions can be introduced by video, and class time can be used for active learning, drills, practice problems, group work, and the like. Second, in making these videos, uh, I have in mind any students who are studying these topics on their own, outside of an academic course, and so would benefit from seeing the main ideas demonstrated in video in lieu of attending a lecture. I uh, won't be covering any material not found in the book. In fact, the presentation will be pretty similar. But plenty of people find watching and hearing to be an effective way to learn alongside of reading. And if that's your case, then these videos are for you. In this video, I will explain what the book or course is about in the broadest terms. Uh, anyone who knows much about undergraduate computer science curriculum knows that a discrete math course plays a crucial role. But if you're just starting out learning some computer science, then the terms discrete math and functional programming probably sound pretty foreign. So just to be clear, we are not suggesting that other math is indiscrete, uh, nor that other programming is dysfunctional. That's not what those words mean. Uh, discrete mathematics is an umbrella category that um, is used to capture a range of mathematical topics, including set theory, symbolic logic, number theory, graph theory, algorithms and their analysis, matrices, sequences, recurrence relations, combinatorics, automata theory, just to name a few. And if you don't know what those things are, don't worry. You're not supposed to know what they are before this course. You're supposed to know what they are. You're supposed to know about them after this course, or at least some of them. Uh, this book isn't exhaustive, and uh, any discrete math course needs to pick and choose among the many topics that fall under the discrete math category. But what ties all these things together into the category discrete math? Well, a blunt way to put it is that all of them aren't calculus. Since much of late high school math and early college math is about getting you ready for calculus and then teaching you calculus and then teaching you what to do with calculus, uh, this category catches a bunch of things that, are, that easily get shortchanged in their coverage in late high school and early college. But they're important. Yeah, they're especially important for computer science, and so they warrant a course of their own. A better explanation of what this category means is that all these topics deal with what we might call discrete or atomic mathematical objects as opposed to something continuous like the real number line um, that uh, the world that calculus and related topics live in. Uh, but more uh, of that is going to be covered in section 1.1 and in the next video. What makes this book different from other discrete math books is that it pairs discrete math with topics, discrete math topics with an introduction to programming. And not just any kind of programming. Uh, this is what we call programming in the functional style. Uh, it makes, uh, makes this introduction to programming a little different from typical pro programming introductions that would likely use some combination of the empirical, um, I'm sorry, the imperative style of programming and the object-oriented style. Specifically, uh, we'll be using the programming language ML, or SML, which uh, stands for Standard ML, and I'll say more about what functional programming is and the choice of programming language in the video to accompany section 1.6. For now, rather than previewing this previewing the specific topics, I think it is more important that I explain the deeper goals of a course like this. I see this course of study as being more about training your mind, uh, making you think more carefully, more precisely, that is, in a formal, rigorous way. 
which we hope will be transferable to other areas of life and study, not just to math and computer science. This is expressed in some themes that you'll see recur in this book or course. The first theme is, is what I call proof and program. Uh, after the first three chapters of this book, which I consider to be mainly pre preliminary exercises for the real meat of it that, that we start uh, around chapter four, um, your work in this course will be divided into, first of all, writing proofs, and second, writing computer programs. And it's my ambition uh, to help you see how these two endeavors are complementary to each other. They really are two sides of the same task. Being able to write a good proof should make you a better programmer, and being able to write a good program should make you a better mathematician. I happen to think that both of these will help you write a better essay as well, but following up that way is going to be up to you. Second, this course aims to teach you how to think recursively. Um, recursive, that is self-referential thinking, is crucial both to mastering programming and to working in some areas of mathematics. It also has a reputation of being one of the hardest mental jumps for students uh, to make in their first few semesters of programming. But my experience in teaching both a course like this and in teaching conventional programming courses has uh, showed me that the functional style of programming and the background of discrete mathematics makes recursion uh, much more accessible to the beginning student. Uh, next, this course will force you to grapple with formal definitions. Understanding what words mean in mathematics and computer science is crucial for making any progress, so you'll see me come back to this many times. Formal definitions uh, are also going to serve as a proxy for formal rigorous thinking in general that this course is trying to, um, uh, uh, to prepare you for and teach you to do. Finally, we'll find that many times uh, in this course, what we do in programming and in proving can be summarized under the terms analysis and synthesis. Analysis is taking things apart. Synthesis is putting things together. When you write a proof, uh, you will first need to take apart the information uh, given in the proposition's hypothesis and then assemble the fact asserted in its conclusion using what you've discovered in the analysis phase. What we do in programming is perfectly analogous to that. We break down the data given in the parameters and then we assemble the result from them. This completes my introductory comments uh, to the book and any course that would accompany it. So please join me in the next video where I introduce the concept of a set and use that as a jumping off point from continuous mathematics that you would have learned in high school um, to the discrete mathematics we'll be doing in this course.